JavaScript is a loosely typed language, so it has like a notion of types, right? You have numbers, strings, booleans, and objects. There's like eight primitives, but in typed languages, you have a lot more types and you have custom types that you can create. And what that allows you to do is like model data, model objects, and pass things around the code base and think about them in a structured format as opposed to just an unstructured format. An example is like in JavaScript right here, as I look at this method that I wrote, three years ago, it essentially takes in an object, right? And then that object does like a bunch of stuff, or this can actually be a string. Like there is internal loose type checking here where like if somebody called this method on this class, game object properties, you called the set method. So let's say you have a, a game object props equal new game object properties. And then I call props that set. I could either pass it a string. I can pass it an object you know, which has its own structure of stuff, properties and variables. And so what happens here is this function becomes outrageously complex and I have no idea how external people are using it. I don't know how it's being used from the outside world, right? I don't know what the shape of this property is. I don't know if they're passing in a number or a string or anything related, right? And so the internals of this code is complicated because I don't know what the outside world looks like. I don't know if they're using one argument. I don't know if they're using two arguments because that is just the nature of JavaScript. You can, there is no enforcement in terms of what the contract is for this particular method and the data that is gonna be provided. There's no contract that basically says it needs to be these two arguments. There's no contract that says it could be one argument. There's no contract that could even say that it needs to be three arguments. Like a, a person in JavaScript can overload this function without you even changing this. They could pass in anything that they want, which can break stuff. They can pass in a number that that would break anything. They could pass in two more numbers, three numbers, four numbers. They could pass in an object here. They could do this without this contract even abiding by that. This signature doesn't even define it as a spec in terms of like what it allows and how it should be operating, right? So this is a loosely typed language, right? And it basically encourages developers to do dumb things. It allows them to do dumb things. And the only time that you're gonna see whether or not somebody did something wrong is when this code actually runs, right? Meaning they're actually using, playing the game or they're using your website, right? So why type languages are valuable is because if for instance, this was strongly typed and you basically said this is meant to be a number and this is meant to be a string, then a developer can do this because the compiler will, before the, before the code is even built, and goes to run, the compiler will yell at you and say that there is an error on this line, you're using it completely wrong. Does that make sense? So it definitely makes it a lot harder for developers, like type languages, to do the wrong things. And it also makes it a lot harder for developers to build things the right way, right? Because you don't have all the flexibility and power to do all this stuff. But what it ends up doing is it enforces and encourages cleaner code. It reduces the amount and misuses of interfaces and contracts that you design. And it also helps to reduce the complexity of the internals of the methods. Because if this contract didn't exist where it requires a number and requires a string, then the internals of this method has to do a bunch of checking, it has to check different types of properties that you're sending in. It has to think about different ways or, or being used. It has to handle a bunch of different exceptions or side effects and things like that. And so the internals of itself just end up becoming complicated. Whereas if this was essentially to say prop is always an object, which I mean, you can't really, this is JavaScript, so object could be anything, but in TypeScript, then you just delete all that code. Now the method is literally just enforced by the compiler that anybody that's calling it, and then you can write code that just expects it to be an object. Yes, it makes it harder to write code, which is why I encourage a lot of people to start with like JavaScript or Python so they don't have to think about types. But over the long term, in terms of large code bases, right, large complex code bases with complex behavior, type languages actually are much more beneficial. It makes it easier to reason about code. It makes it easier to find bugs when people do the wrong things. It actually helps you compile the code, which makes it actually smaller and easier for the machine to to interpret. So there's a lot of benefits to type languages. There's a lot of benefits to loosely typed languages. It just depends on the size and nature of your application. Also depends on how fast and how dirty you want to be with writing code. You could also with loosely typed languages have really good styles or patterns or practices that you follow that make it easier to reason about code, but it requires a lot higher of like a 
programming IQ to be able to do those things. And it requires a enforced discipline internally to do the things the right way, right? Whereas like a compiler will yell at you and say, you can't do this. Whereas a loosely typed language, you have to basically force yourself to do the right thing. I do wish raw JavaScript would be more strict on the function signatures. JavaScript is crazy. Like you can basically not even have arguments and then internally, I don't know if people know this, but you can literally have access to a hidden argument or property called arguments which essentially is the list of all the arguments that are actually provided. And you could actually access the arguments object within a function and you could look for specific like keys and values and stuff within that. And this is how like overloading and ugliness actually came to be. And actually in the early days of doing JavaScript, this was like a highly flexible thing that you can do. And you were like the most powerful engineer in the world, if you knew the low level internals about accessing in this stuff and you would create the most crazy like interfaces to do stuff. But again, it just makes it so that you can, the internals of the actual methods just become extremely ugly and they're hard to manage, they're hard to maintain and you have no idea how the external world is using stuff and you're supporting 15 different use cases through one method. And then, you know, as code evolves and gets more complex and people start using and writing code around the code that you wrote, it becomes harder and harder to change, right? Because if you have this one little edge case in here that you're supporting because like due to brain, like use case of this method was something that you decided to support two years ago and everybody builds their code around that expectation. And then you decide to remove due to change use case and you're like, this should be doing something different or the logic is wrong. Now you got 15 or 20 different use cases that you have to like reverse engineer from the bottom up to figure out if it should be doing the right thing. So it's kind of like, it's like one of those things that it's just like very hairy. I love JavaScript. I know it sounds like I don't, I love JavaScript, but it's just like, um, it's a tough language. And again, it takes a lot of discipline. Like a lot of my early JavaScript that I wrote in this library, you can see, I mean, I've wrote JS doc for everything. I use classes for everything. And I still find it going back into this code base. It's still sometimes hard to reason about decisions I made.